Hey guys, welcome back to Reserved Investments on YouTube. So towards the beginning of November, 2022, Dan Morphy posted on Facebook that a total warehouse find of over 450 vintage Star Wars figures was found and is being consigned to his auction house. Now, if you don't know what auction house Dan Morphy is affiliated with, it is Morphy Auctions out of Adamstown, Pennsylvania. Now, full disclosure, I have been both a buyer and a seller, i.e. consigner, through his auction house, as I only live 45 minutes away. So this is a spectacular find that we're going to be talking about today in this video. And if you don't know what I'm referring to, Dan Morphy put out a Facebook post that states a total warehouse find over 450 Star Wars figures all have been stored away in their original cardboard cases since 1980. Some pieces were added at later dates, but most were purchased in the early 1980s. All are being sold at no reserve in our February 2023 toy sale. This is a total fresh find. So I'm going to link an article in the video description below with this particular breaking news story, or I should say previous breaking news story, given how far behind I am, that premiered originally on JediNews.com. I do want to give them credit for putting out this particular piece. And there are pictures that you guys can check. This collection does look incredible. Now, there's a lot of people that have been reaching out to me, asking me what I think about this particular find. Is it going to affect the market going forward? And I do want to answer those questions. First and foremost, it looks like the way that Morphe Auctions is choosing to market this, they are not sending the collection, from what I see, to AFA for grading and then putting it up for bid. So all of these pieces are going to most likely go to auction raw. And from what it looks like, just from Dan Morphy's original post, is that these are going to be in lots. So these are going to be broken up in the lots. I don't know if they're going to be individual. I don't know if there's going to be multiple figures in a lot that you can bid on. But what's going to be interesting is what Morphy Auctions does is, if you guys are in the area like I am, they will put this out on display in their auction house. And you can go and you can look at it and you can assess the condition of these items for yourself. So that makes it great if you're a speculator, if you're somebody that wants to go in, but you're kind of unsure, you know, what price should I pay for this? If I send it to AFA, is it going to come back in AFA 70 condition? Or is it going to come back in, you know, AFA 85, AFA 90? Which if it does come back in AFA 90, depending on what price you paid, you pretty much won the lotto at that particular point. Now, to be fair, this is always a great unknown. Um, I sometimes don't like when auction companies do this, where they take a consignment and rather than send it for grading, they put it right up for bidding. Only because if you're somebody that doesn't have the means to travel to the auction house and look at it in person, you have to go by either the catalog description that's in the auction catalog itself or on the website. Or if you know somebody, you can have them go and look at it and then report back to you the findings, which doesn't help much if you're somebody right now that wants to bid on this lot and you live in, say, California, or even Maine, or Florida, or Texas, meaning you're not local. But this is a very, very stellar, legendary find. And it goes to show you guys that these collections that are unearthed, that are not graded, they are out there in mass, guys. You know, I keep bringing this up in my videos. I don't think a lot of you realize how much of this stuff was produced. Even a lot of the items that you guys love, that you tell me, hey, Sean, I wish I could go back to the 1980s or 1990s. All this stuff was mass produced in the tens of millions in most cases. These finds, while they're historic, they're not really uncommon. Now, to be fair, is it uncommon to find 450 factory sealed vintage Star Wars figures in one shot? Yes, very much so. But you got to realize there are people out there, and this is what I would tell the, the factory sealed video game collectors. There are people out there that have these items that are just either sitting in storage, they're sitting in their own collections, or even they're forgotten about. And the people don't realize how much money they're sitting on. And this is something that is always very interesting to me in the antiques and collectibles trade. You know, earlier in the week, I got a call. Somebody found a massive Silver Age of comic books in near mint condition. Now that's not uncommon either. 
There's a lot of collections that are out there waiting to be discovered or they weren't sent in for grading or they're not known or they were never brought to market before. You guys have got to understand these risks. Now, with that being said, there's one more topic I want to cover in this video before I pretty much end this video. And that is, how is this going to affect the market going forward? In all honesty, it's not. I'm going to be 100% honest here. Right now, vintage Star Wars toys are selling for all-time highs. As a matter of fact, I honestly hope that there is somewhat of a correction in that market because a lot of this hysteria is being brought on by Disney and Disney Plus with the Obi-Wan series. Now we have Andor. All these Star Wars series are just pulling collectors out of the woodwork and they're bidding up these pieces. Now I know what some of my critics are going to say. Well, Sean, prices have dropped a little bit over the last few months and since the pandemic. I agree with you, but if you look at the prices of some of this stuff, in my opinion, they're still selling at fairly historic amounts. So I honestly think this is healthy for the market because it is, at the very least, going to cause more supply to trickle into the market. And basically that should, that should help edge up the demand overall. Meaning if supply goes up, demand will sometimes fall when we look at economics. In this case though, I don't see it having a long-term impact on the market for vintage Star Wars collectibles. And I wanna make that very clear. What's most likely gonna happen in this auction, and I've seen this a million times, especially with Morphe auctions, this is gonna attract the attention of high-pocketed dealers, investors, speculators, and they're gonna go there and people with a ton of money are just gonna bid the hell out of this stuff and they're gonna buy as much of it as they can. And I'm gonna be 100% honest, I'm tempted to bid on this particular lot, meaning these items that are going up for bid, I actually, if I go and I examine the condition, I may put some bids in for some of this stuff. So that's all I'm gonna say on this. I don't think it's gonna affect the market though, over the long term. This is gonna be relatively absorbed in the market fairly quickly in my opinion, given just how much demand there is for vintage Star Wars toys, products, and collectibles at present time. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And please, please click on the link, not only to the one for JediNews.com that shows this story and the pictures, but also check out Morphe Auctions. You might learn something, even if you don't like traditional antiques. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.